When you take a photograph, you want it to be a clear representation of what you see. Well, that's why you focus and use a flash if it's dark. You want the photo to be clear and your subject easy to recognize. It's the same principle when you're trying to write a good sentence. Your meaning should be sharp, crisp, and to the point, not fuzzy or blurred. Oh, Arthur, look! Look at the picture I took of Mrs. Johnson. Yeah. I think it turned out pretty well. Oh, nice and sharp. Yeah, very clear. Oh, thank you. So, now let me see one of yours. Sure. Here. That's um, interesting. What is it? No, 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 no. Let me guess. A cloud. Sonia, it's Shakespeare. Huh? Well, I don't see the result. Are you wearing your contacts? No, I, I tore one of them yesterday. Oh, well, where are your glasses? I mislaid them. Well, do you expect to take clean prints without your contacts or your glasses? Sonia, I can't find them. I can't find them. I will find them. You oh, just wait. Yes, I will you look around. Find it would be them. so easy. Find them. I looked you over here. They're not anywhere look. in the... Look. Here they are. How are you expecting to find them if I can't see? Uh. Mm -hmm. Thank you for finding my glasses. Ah, well, now you can help me. Hmm? I'm writing a story on Mrs. Johnson for the newsletter. She was chosen department head of the month. Oh. Now, Freddy looked over it at lunch today, but uh, I don't know. He said it's confusing in places. Well, let's take a look at it. Oh, okay. The Lacey's department store management announced that Mrs. Virginia Johnson of customer services was chosen department head of the month. Now, that's very clear, Sonia. You have a complete sentence, a complete thought. Yeah, but this one bothered Freddy, uh, and me too, but I just can't put my finger on it. On Friday, our office will have a ceremony. We hope all employees can attend. Aha! Uh -huh. In writing, Sonia, this is known as a run-on sentence. I don't see anything about running in it. No, no, no. A run-on sentence is one that doesn't stop where it should and ends up as a confused collection of ideas. Oh! Right. See, you, you have two subjects and two verbs. Office will have, we hope. So, you can change the comma to a period and capitalize we. Now you have two complete correct sentences. Hmm. Well... That's okay, I guess, but I wanted one sentence. Those ideas would go together well in one sentence. Oh, I'm so glad you're starting to think in those terms. Yes, you're right. You can combine those ideas into one sentence. Remember when we were discussing punctuation and the comma? Vaguely. Well, the comma, when used with connecting words like and, but, or, and other words, well, they can join two like sentences. Oh! Well, then I might write, on Friday, our office will have a ceremony, comma, and we hope all employees can attend. Right, or you could use a semicolon and no connecting word. When the clauses are closely related, like these two are, a semicolon can be used. Hmm. Well, should I capitalize we? No. When you use a semicolon to join two ideas, you don't have to capitalize. <gasps> And I can think of one other way that sentence could be written. Oh. Watch. On Friday, our office will have a ceremony which we hope all employees can attend. Yeah. It's a good idea. It's like focusing a camera to clarify your image. <laughs> yeah. Right, revise, right, rewrite. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that picture is dry yet. Writing, revising, and rewriting. That's the writing process. Run-on sentences are easy to avoid if you check your writing. Watch out for three dangerous words that send up a red flag. It, then, and therefore. When you see one of these words right after a comma, it probably means that you've just built yourself a run-on sentence. They just don't work in compound sentences. Look at these sentences. The car was going too fast. It couldn't stop. It started to rain, 
Then the lightning began. These sentences can be corrected in two ways. The first uses a semicolon, not a comma, to connect the two clauses. It leaves them connected, but cures the case of the run-on sentence. The other correction is even easier. Make two separate sentences. Just put a period in place of the semicolon, and don't forget to capitalize the first word in the second sentence. As you can see, a lot of things can be done with a sentence to say essentially the same thing. It's a good idea when writing a sentence to ask yourself, are the words a complete thought? And do they have both a subject and a verb? A sentence fragment does not have one or the other. Look at this. John Brown explained personnel policy. The new manager of the store. The new manager of the store is a sentence fragment. What's missing? No verb. So it isn't a sentence. One way to correct it would be to make the sentence fragment a part of the first sentence. John Brown, the new manager of the store, explained personnel policy. There we go. The fragment just became a clause modifying John Brown. We could also do it this way. Take the sentence fragment and make a complete sentence out of it by adding the subject and the verb. He is the new manager of the store. Now it is a complete sentence. Take a look at these two examples and decide which one is correct. Knowing little about the subject, I enrolled in a class. Or, knowing little about the subject, I enrolled in a class. You probably picked the second one, and you're correct. Oops. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Edwards. Uh, the sentence chapter, yes. I... Oh, getting well into it. To, to be finished by Friday, I... I... <clears throat> Same to you. Oh. Well, uh, some anxious folks only speak in run-ons, and all you can do is answer in fragments. If you confuse someone when you tell them something, you can always explain it again or answer their questions. When you write, any errors are there, and you don't have a second chance to explain, as you do in a conversation. Let's look at an example that I put in my book. The train was going nearly 100 miles per hour. Its brakes had failed on a steep hill. Do you see that this sentence is actually two complete sentences with no connecting word? How would you correct it? Write. Use a period after our, and capitalize its to make two sentences. Now, the conductor used every emergency procedure in an effort to stop the runaway train. Look at in an effort to stop the runaway train. There's no complete action performed by anyone. So we need to put that with the sentence before it. The conductor used every emergency procedure, comma, in an effort to stop the runaway train. Just remember, in every complete sentence, you need a subject and a verb to make a complete thought. Don't be so impatient. Let me complete my thought. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's just that I'm so excited about the ceremony. I really don't know how I let you talk me into this. May I see your write-up before it goes in the newsletter? Oh, okay, but first, look at your picture. I think I developed it last night. Hmm. I knew it. You and Arthur have been developing something. Freddie, you have a one-train mind. One track. Well, anyway, here's my story, Mrs. Johnson. Okay. Oh, boy, I've got to see this. The management will award a plaque to Mrs. Johnson that is made of oak. Well, if uh, she's oak, 
that I'm Maple, and you must be Fur, or is that Furrin? <laughs> I'm an American now. Thank you, Sonia, for that patriotic moment. <laughs> That's all right, Sonia. You've simply misplaced your modifier. Thank you, Pot. Look at the sentence again. What does the phrase, that is made of oak, modify me or the plaque? Well, the plaque, of course. Then you should put the descriptive phrase next to what it modifies. It avoids confusion. Hmm. Like this? The management will award a plaque that is made of oak to Mrs. Johnson. Right. To avoid confusion and conflict in writing, check it carefully to make sure that it sounds right and makes good sense. Mm. Good sentence construction demands practice. Even writers like me read over everything we write and check it carefully. I don't want to give Mr. Edwards the satisfaction of finding any mistakes. It takes practice to catch errors and fix them yourself. Now let's look at a few more common errors people make when writing sentences. Sentences should fit together in a sensible and correct way. See if you can figure out what's wrong with the following sentence. Jim plans on finishing this class, find a job, and take a vacation. In a way, this problem is like subject-verb agreement. One part of the sentence doesn't agree in structure with another. The sentence begins, Jim plans on. Then it says, finishing this class. There's nothing wrong with Jim plans on finishing this class. But Jim plans on find a job? Or Jim plans on take a vacation? These are called non-parallel constructions. To write this sentence correctly, we could say, Jim plans on finishing this class, finding a job, and taking a vacation. Now, I want you to try reworking this passage with me. Today's woman is attractive, intelligent, and has ambition. She earns part of the family income, keeping a family and home, and an active social life. Today's woman is attractive. That's fine. Now remember, the rest of the sentence must follow the same structure. Which construction is different in the sentence? Right. Has ambition. How should we change it? Today's woman is attractive, intelligent, and ambitious. She earns part of the family income. What about the next part of the sentence? Is it the same construction? No. Let's change it. She earns part of the family income, keeps a family and home, and has an active social life. Parallel structure. Another construction to watch in sentences is the not only, but also structure. Look at this sentence. She not only has a career and is a successful mother and community worker. When you start an idea with not only, you must follow it with but also. How should we correct this sentence? Right. She not only has a career, but also is a successful mother and community worker. Now, do you see the error here? The congressman's voting record not only confirmed his opponent's charges and angered the voters. Right, not only confirmed his opponent's charges, but also angered the voters. While we're on the subject of combining different parts of a sentence, 
Let's talk about the word would for a minute. Sometimes you see this mistake. If Tony would not have thought Maria was dead, he would not have let himself be shot. The second part of the sentence tells what would happen if a certain situation, the if part of the sentence, had occurred. So use the verb had. If Tony had not thought Maria was dead, he would not have let himself be shot. Why don't we go over a short passage together and correct the sentences. Many adults who pass high school equivalency exams find new careers to get personal satisfaction and going to college. They not only discover new career alternatives and increase their general sense of accomplishment, said one professional nurse, if I would not have taken the GED test, I would not have found this job. You've noticed that each of these sentences is in way or another. In the first sentence, we have that problem of structures that don't fit together. Let's write it this way. Many adults who pass high school equivalency exams find new careers, get personal satisfaction, and go to college. Notice I've put all the verbs in the same form, the present. Find, get, and go. Now in the next sentence, we see the infamous not only but also trap. So it should read, they not only discover new career alternatives, but also increase their general sense of accomplishment. And in the final sentence, we have a conditional statement with the if-would construction. Remember that two woulds is one would too many, and you must use the verb had in the if part of the sentence. And the sentence becomes, if I had not taken the GED test, I would not have found this job. And so I'd like to thank my mother, my father, the department store management, and especially my most valuable employee, Sonia Pavlovich. Nominated for five Academy Awards, including Worst Actress. Oh, Freddie. Sonia, what are you doing? I'm helping Mrs. Johnson write her acceptance speech. She said, since you got me into this, you could just help me get through it. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm glad that I am not Mrs. <coughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Johnson. Hello. Uh, I was just passing, passing? through. Passing? Uh-huh. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> just the usual, Freddie. <laughs> oh, oh, listen. Yeah. I think your speech is coming along very well. Oh? Uh-huh. Just listen to the part where I start telling the life story of our heroine. Don't overdo it. Okay, <sighs> this is the speech, and I'm being you, okay? Okay. It all began in one room where I lived with eight brothers and sisters. That's how I learned to manage complaints. Sonia, I had one brother, and we lived in the suburbs. So I added a little color. Yes. I mean, you said he was always complaining, didn't you? <sighs> yes. Just, just wait. I'll go on. Just wait. <clears throat> I was born in Atlanta, but was well educated in the public schools. What's wrong with the schools in Atlanta? Nothing that I know of. Let me show you something. Why did you use the word but as if it were unusual to be well educated in Atlanta? As if you were presenting two contrasting ideas. Well, Arthur said that you could make two sentences into one by joining them together with a comma and using words like and or but. Yes, but you must use the right word. But means an exception or contrast from what came before it. And is used for things that are alike. Oh. So you should say, I was born in Atlanta and was well educated in the public schools. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, let me go on. 
I went to business school and took up swimming as a hobby. First, I learned freestyle, and I married my instructor. Hold and... it. <laughs> I don't think we need to go into my personal life. And secondly, why would you put going to business school and swimming in the same sentence? Uh, w well... Um... You don't put totally unrelated thoughts into the same sentence. Why don't you say this? I went to business school, and I studied management. Oh, I like that much better. Good. Sounds real good, doesn't it? what happens when you forget to advance the film in your camera? You get a double exposure, right? Two pictures on the same frame that might have nothing to do with each other. Well, sometimes people have that problem with their sentences. They put two unrelated ideas in one sentence. Well, that sort of thing leaves the reader confused. So, even if it's grammatically correct, you don't have a good sentence unless the ideas are logically connected. Take a look at this one. Giraffes in some African countries are protected as an endangered species. And some of the African homelands are seeing political change. Now, unless giraffes have been sticking their necks into African politics, which is unlikely, then those two ideas should not be together. I mean, they say politics makes strange bedfellows, but writing does not. We need to check our writing for this kind of error. Let's find a way to relate these ideas in a sensible way. Giraffes in some African countries are protected as an endangered species. That's a good sentence. Now, how can we relate the ideas of political change with this? Well, we can write... Protection of endangered species is an example of political change in some African homelands. See how those ideas flow from one to the other. Now, I guess the opposite problem is the failure to combine short sentences that are related. For instance, she had been studying for months. She heard the exams would be difficult. Why is she studying? because she heard the exams would be difficult, right? So we join the sentences with the word because. Now, how would you suggest joining these two closely related sentences? She passed the test, she found a better job. And we could say, after she passed the test, she found a better job. But why wouldn't we write, she passed the test then she found a better job. Right, because we never join two sentences with then. You'd have to start a new sentence. You should also try to avoid the following problem when you're combining sentences. John studied in Israel when he has lived there since. When has nothing to do with the issue, does it? What's important is that Israel is where he studied. How would you rewrite the sentence using the word where? John studied in Israel where he has lived since. Always think in terms of sharpening the point of your sentence and taking out any words that dull its meaning. But it does take practice. So do all the sentence exercises in your workbook. Oh, excuse me. Just a minute. Oh, Hi, there. Freddy. Come on in. You've got company. Yeah. Hello, Arthur. Hello. It's us. I mean, I, I mean it's we. We're here. Oh, good. Oh, good. Boy, <laughs> coffee. Freddy. What? Um, Arthur. 
sir. I, I'd like you to meet the woman of the hour, my boss, Mrs. Johnson. Very nice to meet you. Sonia is often telling me how much she learns from you. And I hear the same about you. Oh, come on in, please. <laughs> Thank you. Arthur? Mm-hmm? Mrs. Johnson was honored tonight at the department head of the month celebration. Really? Congratulations. Thank you. I nominated her because, in contrast with a lot of people I've met since immigrating for America, she is never rude to me and never teases me. In contrast to, Sonia, you must always say, in contrast to. And immigration to America. Right. In contrast to many people I've met since immigrating to America. These are just a few of these kinds of expressions. Mm -hmm. But you are both always doing this to me. Come, I'll uh, get some donuts. Certain words take certain prepositions, like of, to, and for. Unfortunately, there's no rule that I can teach you. In your reading and conversation, you've mastered most of these expressions. But if you haven't, there is a list of the more common errors in your workbook. Here you go. I was just looking at some of your photographs, Arthur. Really? A study in clouds? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, in a way, I guess. Uh... No, no, they're supposed to be. Uh, yes, I, actually, that is from my um, abstract expressionist period. Yeah. I, I was uh, using them to explain to Sonia that Lack of focus and clarity is okay in some art forms, but not in writing. One must uh, practice writing sentences that make sense and are... And are clear and focused. Yes. Thank you. Um, would you uh, like some of these? Help us. Ooh, I would. I don't know about uh... you. 